It's moments in your life and in your career that lead to bigger moments. And I think that this is one I'm in the middle of. I'm happy, elated to be talking to Miss Kalita Smith. Listen. Let me tell you something. This is the only actress I know that already had NAACP awards before beginning her acting career on camera. This is true. Like, nigga, how does this happen? Uh, unemployment. <laughs> How's that the answer? What do you mean? That's unemployment because it's in the theater. So, the theater. so you did theater where? I did theater wherever they would have me. <laughs> but where did you start? You were in Oakland? Uh, I started in Oakland. Okay. And then I did a, a play that traveled, um, which I thought was a great idea. Mm -hmm. And this was in the beginning. Let me move this. Don't get mad at me. <clears throat> no, I'm not going to get mad at you, but this is very threatening. <laughs> He's rubbing it real phallic like. <laughs> <laughs> listen, look at it. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> you so silly. <laughs> no, um, no, uh, real talk. Um, I started with a, a play that traveled, and this was in the 1900s when we were doing what was considered Chitlin Circuit. Okay. And we were one of the first plays to kind of after uh, Beauty Shop and all that, mm -hmm. the, um, uh, Shelley Garrett shows, and um, they proved to be very successful. We did, you know, theater houses that were like 5,200 people. And Get out of here. Listen, when I first heard 5,200 people laugh, that was infectious. Like to the point to where I was like, give me all of the jokes. Huh. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. It just fed me in such a way where I was like, oh, this is it. And I was fired from like four jobs right before that and I walked away from um, uh, in a, in a relationship and it was just like, oh, I found my place. Oh, so unemployment led to that. I see what you're saying. It made the vacancy for theater. Yeah, and also theater is what you do when you're unemployed from television and film. Didn't know that. Yeah, well. Now you do. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't find me, boo boo, that's where I'll I'm at. I'll be in the theater, huh? <laughs> Catch me live, huh? Well, I'll jump forward and then jump back because okay. you mentioned laughter being infectious, right? Yeah. And uh, as a stand up comic, I am for sure addicted to getting laughs. Yeah, you are. Are you going to do stand up? I have no choice. At all? At this point, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Do you, you got it in the bag or you need some help or what? Uh, both. I, I have a bag and I need help with some other bags. Okay. <laughs> Great. Carry my bags. That'd well, I'll, I will offer. What? Boy, don't. don't <laughs> I'll <nigga>. offer. <laughs> <laughs> and we both got on fatigue. Yeah, Come on. I, nigga, one of my skill somebody's sets. Somebody's Marine, somebody Army. Huh. One of my skill sets or is. Or so was Kmart and the others. Uh, Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is standard issue. That shit has been actually in a war. Yeah, uh, There's yeah. a bullet hole you on the city yeah, right you there. You can smell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's an active duty uniform. Um, I want to say that shit came with two bullets in the pocket, but I didn't say. <laughs> no. Anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, I can help. Um. Where I can, you know what I mean? No, I, you know, I've helped it, it's a few so people. I don't be blasting who all everybody is, but I can help. Like if we're talking about getting you five, ten, or fifteen minutes going, yeah, I can help. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's interesting because it's been looming for a while, and um, there's this trepidation that I have, and I'm not sure why. What That's the word is? of the day. Keep going. Is that the word of the it's day? Trepidation. Great. Don't Indeed. ask me to spell it. Mm -mm, no. Yeah, great. Um, and I, I don't, I don't know why. I am a fan of such um, renowned comedians, um, like George Carlin, mm. um, yourself. Um, Dave Chappelle, you know, hold on, that, <laughs> no, but just, I appreciate it, but no, goddamn, Carlin, yeah. then me, then Chappelle. Well, uh, I'm gonna put that in there because okay. I, I really believe in no particular that, order, please. No, <laughs> and it, it's no particular order. It has everything to do with um, the ability to be able to have a conversation and mm. allow it to be funny, as opposed to stand up, joke, joke, joke. Like I really like people who can tell stories. You know, have a conversation mm -hmm. standing up as opposed to, and that's what I really want to do. Right. I don't want to do stand up. Right. I want to have a conversation standing up. Right. Yeah. And Bernie was one of the first people who kind of caught that, and so was um, Don Rickles. And um, I, um, I think at the time I was really um, just flattered. Mm. That, oh, you guys are amazing. You guys are saying this, and that's just, okay, so let me just be an actress who can be funny as opposed to really pursuing it and allowing it to be a flourishing thing where it allows me to provide jobs for us and other people. 
That's real. I think it's low hanging fruit for you because you're such a uh, polarizing personality. Um, That's a nice one. You already tell crazy ass stories. It's just about translating it so that the masses can get it the way you say it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the way you say it. Yeah, yeah. it's the way you say it, you know. Yeah. And so um, you, Rickles told you you're funny, you should do stand up. Yeah, he told me I should go to Vegas right now. I didn't, I think maybe he was telling me like quit my job. <laughs> hmm. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, totally. Um, he, you know, he was one of those people. He came into the set and he was, he would terrorize people, and that was his way to enjoy himself and also to put himself in a position to where he's revered. Huh. And um, it was a couple people that I saw the look on their faces, and so I flipped his joke on this, on an axis to where it made him laugh. And then mm. he said, well, you got timing. Vanda, you got timing. I said, first of all, the V is silent. And Hilarious. The character name is Wanda. Right. <laughs> Vanda. <laughs> Vanda, you got timing. Yeah, so. That's wonderful. Yeah. So. I think if you do it right, like you should moonlight it. Because moonlighting? moonlighting is where you do, um, uh, you have you have other priorities, <laughs> and then the stand up is something you sprinkle in it. Yeah. And if you do it that way, then yeah. it'll it'll make more sense because you're yeah, wildly yeah. busy, and the concept of being like stop other stuff to pursue this yeah. is never going to be accepted well by somebody well, who's a grinding entrepreneur. You no, know what I mean? And and rent. <laughs> That part, <laughs> right? But you'd be into the money pretty quick because uh, there's there's a there's a need, and it's about supply and demand, right? Yeah. So there's a need for funny black women, mm. and so no matter how many people are out here in the in, out here working, you stand out right away because there's less of y'all, and y'all are the that's the most in high demand, right? And it's crazy because but clever conversations, you know, not we'll get just, you to where it's clever because okay. you clever, you said trepidation, nigga, okay. we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You said polarizing. That was nice. You like that? Yeah, I, I did. think trepidation still wins. Good God. That's like 42 letters. Just a couple of more. I'm going to call it Keela and see. <laughs> so, Alexa? What, what are you doing when you're not grinding? Like, I know you to be somebody who's always on it. Up, Adam, gone. Get it. Got Boom, boom. This yeah. person called that, that, that. Phone, yeah. stay ringing. On buzz, yeah. on ring. But when that slows down, not for lack of work, but because you're like, a bitch need a vacation. Like, and what I did do you do? I well, so. I gotta, I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Rest or yeah. grind? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so the last project you just came off of was what? Oh, um, good was it? Um, I'm working on a show called In the Cut, um, Bounce TV currently. We're in our seventh season. Um, the last show probably was, um, I did a film called Influence mm -hmm. uh, with Carl Weber and uh, Tri Destin, and they're um, um, doing it at BT and uh, Z Nation. Six. That was six that years was of Z Nation, wasn't it? Five years. Five years. Five years. Z Nation. Five years on uh, Sci Fi. And that's the one and that had you six. living up. In Spokane, in Washington, where you are famous and plastered, they got wallpaper to show face on you. <laughs> what you mean? Hold Listen, on. I was. Let like, me let me say this. As an alumni <laughs> this of White Eastern Washington, <laughs> is that Betty Jackson on the walls? <laughs> so a few years ago, uh, the school, my alumni alumnus, uh, Eastern Washington University, they do this magazine every yeah. month or whatever, and they put me on the front of it just to say like. Did they know. put you on the front? Yeah, he but was on then, porches. which is fine. But then <laughs> I didn't realize that the distribution was as strong as it was yeah. to where like there was a rack in the Spokane airport that was like nine of them wide and yeah. 10 of them high. So it was like 90 magazines. So you walk in and you just see 90 of my face. I was like, this, this nigga running for president? This is, <laughs> yes, nigga. Do it. <laughs> I was like, I know this guy. <laughs> yeah. No, it was great. It was great to see. You know, it wasn't just in the airport. You were actually plastered like you were on porches. <laughs> what? I'm serious. It That's was like, crazy. is this a censorship? Are we, what's happening? <laughs> That's crazy. No, so, it's great. So now I tip back, right? And I want. So are you doing anything up there? Is that why they they had you? No. Oh. I just went to school there. I I <laughs> went to school in Eastern own. Washington, but I'm you know from Western Washington, and so in Western Washington, I'm opening a comedy club. And so that okay. opens in like okay. April. Okay, there it is. But people don't get. I keep saying this, but like I feel like people don't understand the 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 volume and the sheer uh, audacity of it, really, because. Comics open clubs and, you know, it'd be like a little nook or it'd be like something, you know, comics like I'm opening a club and it'd be like 80 seats, 100 seats. Like it's just something that they want to work their stuff out at. Well, I have business partners and this is a million dollar club. This is 340 seats, 
oh. sitting right on I five. Like it's it's oh. comparable to like a one of the bigger improvs. Oh. And so when I say I'm opening the club, people go in, in the coming months, people gonna start to be like, wait a minute. Now, you're but for now a, you're doing a concert. <laughs> <laughs> for now, they're like, Oh yeah, he's just doing a little yeah, but yeah. when this gets going, oh nice. It's gonna make some serious noise. Nice. And so we'll have you up. Okay. I don't say okay with less confidence than no. the other stuff. I want to have you up. <laughs> being a just come host. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I would That's like all you even. What's I, up, listen. motherfuckers? You don't even got to be talking about shit. Just be. Just no, tell I a would. story from that day. God damn, there's a lot of white people here. That shit kills. <laughs> they. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you right. Okay. No, we'll I'm, get you right. I'm in. I'm in. Shit, you saw it. I'm in. So. I like to go uh, with my questions. I like to go shallow, deep, shallow, deep. But I think we're just going to go deep. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I want my, my viewers, like, they tune into the show to see different aspects of the same people that they already feel like they know. Yeah. Like, for instance, I know in order to be uh, an actor or an actress or somebody in this industry, we're all, we're literally entrepreneurs, right? We're all 1099 hustlers <laughs> and in order to be successful in the city to last more than two or three years and to keep that cycle of success and things going you have to actually be a genius and wow. i've seen you create genius you brought me in talking about we were going to this other show we were going to yeah. do that may or may not happen but it is what it is that's just the way the game is you put the energy out yeah and the universe rewards what you put it into yeah. so i want to get at that genius i want to know when you first found out and how that you were talented like, like you were a little girl, and <laughs> who was calling you into the living room? Like, what happened? No, they didn't start that way. Okay. Um, no, just got fired from four nine-to-five jobs okay. and realized that um, it had to be something different. Um, <clears throat> I, I grew up with a, a gentleman who is a Hall of Famer in the NBA, and what he showed me in our relationship was how to believe in your dream. This is Gary Payton? Oakland? To commercial? <laughs> oh, um, how to um yes it, it, oh it, it is yes it gp is. that's my guy yeah um and so what i took away from that relationship was how to believe in your dream mm. and how to be disciplined how to commit how to um find the fortitude to look for and feel what it feels like to be passionate wait wait say that again i can't how to know what to look for when it feels how to how to feel mm -hmm. and know what it is you're looking for, which feels like passion. Ooh. And passion is a very, a very strong force because what it will do is it will change what people will see as sacrifice as this is just something I have to do. Mm. Like, so I think what to go back to your conversation is the things that we come up with that seems to be um, ingenuitous or seems to be um, smart or brilliant or just those things that come to us because we've allowed ourselves the fortitude to be open mm -hmm. to receiving those ideas that happen to be brilliant. Yeah, and a lot comes from circumstance. Yeah. You're like, I need an idea now. <laughs> <laughs> Ta da. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, what would you say? Yeah, that got deep. Did that get deep? That's what I want. <laughs> that's what they need. They need to be like, hold up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Because they don't understand. A lot of times, in my opinion, like an actress like yourself, you get sides to prepare or and a that's role. It sometimes. <laughs> right. But you'll get a role and you're reading it like, I'm going to act like this person. You know what I mean? Versus like who you are to even be able to capture that and act like that person is intellectually above the person you're acting like. Does that make sense? So you never get a <laughs> chance to really reveal your genius. I just, I, to give you an example. Okay. Nigga, Terrence Howard. What? Have you, have you been keeping up with this shit? Terrence Howard came out on a red carpet and people thought he was out of his mind. Why? He was like, I went to the uh, the vestibules of the universe and I found out that the universe has shapes and there's translucence and there's rhombuses and I found out the <laughs> meaning to life. And people like posted that all over uh, nigga Twitter and were like, <laughs> uh, he's lost his mind. No, he just read Where's the Hustle and Flow too? Like this he is what they were on. He just read the secret, that's all. Well, then I saw a whole nother thing. It was a podcast or a TV show or something where somebody really was like, bro, what were you talking about? Yeah. This dude sat for an hour and broke down astrophysics yeah. and what it means to life for humans and he really may have figured the shit out. No, it's it so here's the other thing. I think what we are um 
what we're capable of as artists mm. is to allow our imagination to absolutely speak to us. And what that means is what what we have available to us is a lot of what is Eastern philosophy, right? So we okay. have meditation, we have yoga, we have um, astrophysics, we mm -hmm. have so many other dynamics and other planes. Kama to Sutra. Really... Go, ahead, go ahead. There's that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Listen, I had to lean into the <laughs> to the mic. There's that. <laughs> um, and and when we are allowing ourselves to bend in our mind and our personality, we open up the scope to be able to understand and perceive mm -hmm. all that what this is about. The universe is vast. God is amazing and humongous. Right. What happens is religion makes us small. Mm. Yeah. Even in the Bible, they tell you, you know, don't don't astrology is negative. How is that negative? The stars is right there. We hmm. can't we can't incorporate all that. Other civilizations did. The, the Mayans, Mayans created the, Moors, the calendar. The Egyptians. Man. And mm -hmm. those are one of the eighth wonders of the world. And how are we to be small and to negate any of those things? He probably didn't explain it well because he's on the red carpet and it's quick and it's fast. Right, which is why I went back and looked deeper and, and I was like, Whoa. Shot. And maybe he had a tequila shot. When he took he got his time and explained Man, it, it, he had like nerdy, chubby white dudes like, What? Yeah, well, like, they, everybody was on their heels. They said Shirley McClain was crazy. Did they? Yeah, they said she was crazy. When she started meditating, she started having labyrinths. She went to New Mexico to be able to center herself and all these things. But this, you have to grow to those places, and those places absolutely allow you to become a bigger, better, vaster, more brilliant artist. Hmm. Well, I'll go back some. Well, I'll say this, then I'll go back some. But So uh, I trained at several different acting schools, but the one that I was the most fond of was Leslie Kahn. Acting Institute, and I liked it a lot because in like the second week of comedy intensive, there's no acting, there's no size, there's no scripts. She literally is making everybody figure out what activities they get into their right brain the most, so they can then be in their creative them. Now I want to go back to what yeah. you just said, right? Like you dropped uh, a dime, and you said if you allow your if you allow yourself to bend, yeah, all that can happen. Yeah. When you say bend, like. Because to me, that's the catalyst of the whole thing. If you allow this, then blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So let's talk about that moment, that, that catalyst of the bending. Now, is that like a bend before you break or is that just a uh, be malleable? Yeah. And in what nice way? Word. Yeah. To, to just allow yourself to not be right. Allow yourself not to know. Hmm. And that's a lot because most people want to know. They want to be right. They want to, you know, and that's ego. But if you allow yourself the comfort of what it means to not be the smartest one in the room, because actually the quietest one is the smartest one because you're listening. Hmm. That can help you bend. That I is, think that's the that hardest part for people. That is a bending. That's a bending. So for you particularly, what <laughs> would you say was, I don't want to call it a bending moment, but what would you say was a different catalyst where you're like, let me receive? Um, I think uh, being an just being an actor, becoming an actor, okay, becoming an artist. Because uh, the way I grew up, I grew up in the Bay Area, and <laughs> uh, it's about character development. It's about academics. It's about you know, uh, you know, uh, corporate. Uh, I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm. I'm a child of the uh, the Black Panther Party, so it was really about my community, my culture, moving us forward as a civilization, as a society. Um, and for me to be an artist, I realized what it did was it allowed me to resonate on a more feeling, right, on a more feeling level to be able to be that impactful for my culture, for my people, for myself. Right now. I saw you on a red carpet giving an interview with, I don't know, it just looked like a random white lady, but she asked you a question <laughs> and it led into, you, you, you showed them a spark where you talked about uh, black excellence. You were at the Trumpet Awards and why you were there and who you were there to support and why it was oh, important. Okay. And then you I also just, during this interview, made reference to um, your own successes, not just helping yourself, but to create opportunities yeah. and endeavors for others. Yes. And so... What I didn't know was that you were a child of the Black Panther movement. Yeah. Do you think that that inclusion and wokeness comes from that, that rearing? Sure. And sure. then, so then, like, tell me about that experience, because it's got to be, this is rarefied air that I'm breathing. I'm sitting with somebody who was <laughs> raised by the Black Panther movement? Yeah, yeah. Like, what, how? 
Well, there's a, a documentary where I was eight years old where I interviewed Huey P. Newton. Get um, out of here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I, we just got deep, nigga. Listen, I think I need a shot. <laughs> um, it is it's one of- Huey P. Newton? Yeah. You don't need no damn shot. You need a platform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need a soapbox. Listen, correct. Eight correct. years old and met Huey P. Newton. Yeah, what not even you- met. We, I mean, going to the school, we always, you know, we always- he would always come around. What but do you mean going was, to the school? I went to the school founded by the Black Panther Party, my elementary school. Goodness gracious. Yeah. So you packed grocery bags for the community. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We, yeah. No, it was. I have, an, the, af- I have an affinity for the Black Panther movement. As you should. And, and it's misunderstood often because they, it's projected as if it was so militant to where it was just about guns and being able to be able to. But it wasn't. That's just the FBI COINTEL pro owner. Exactly. Y'all should. Yeah, if you hear that, if you hear, uh, you know, if you hear the three words Black Panther Party and you have a negative connotation, you should realign yourself with truth. The truth. Do some research. Yeah. Go back and see really what it was or about. Or not even do any research. I'll tell you how it really all started was the fact that there was police brutality. Yep. And what they were doing was the police were going around in the neighborhoods and they were pulling black men over mm. in their cars. Mm-hmm. And what they would do is they would assault them. Sounds so, like last year. Sounds like every year. Exactly. And so basically what these gentlemen decided to do was they decided to align themselves together. They came together unlike a gang, but right. more like a guardian angel. Okay. And what they did was they would follow behind certain brothers who would get pulled over to make sure it would be legitimate. Wow. That I didn't even know that. And I've I done know. a whole and that's bunch how of it research. all really started. So they were being like you're saying, Guardian Angel, Big Brother. We're watching yeah. y'all while y'all we're you're watching how keeper. you police. My us. brother's keeper really came from stem from from that type of activity. Like so for me, when it comes to conversations about certain gangs or certain fraternities, I'm a little confused because I'm not sure what what they do. Mm-hmm. Because I came from an environment and I came from an activity mm-hmm. that really spoke to protecting one another. Outstanding. Yeah, not hurting each other. Now, I had a situation where I was pulled over recently, and I don't get pulled over a lot because I was in Washington State, and the car I drive in Washington is the wrapped one. So my face is on it on all around the car. Like, it's like a rapper. <laughs> no wonder you were on the magazine. Right. <laughs> my car, my face is wallpaper. everywhere. <laughs> and that's why I'm okay with it. I'm like, you think that's crazy? I drive that. Yeah, so it's like my face is all over the back window, the six sides of the car. It says NateJacksonComedy.com, all of that, right? Like, it's the massive self-promotion. And so I got pulled over. And I wasn't <laughs> speeding. They and I, no, I was like the dude really kind of seemed like he was low key curious to see like, well, who's in this goddamn car? Yeah. I keep seeing going up and down the highway because yeah. it hasn't been in Washington. It's been in L.A. for ten years. Oh, so okay. I just brought it to Washington. It's been there for two months, and so I get pulled over. I had just left a meeting with my squad. Right, we were all going to the same in the same direction. So when I got pulled over, somebody stopped about two hundred yards ahead and was like, "All right." And then another one, the homie stopped back and yeah. was, and called me while the cop was in my window yeah. on speaker, like, you yeah. good? Yeah. And it affected how the ticket went. Exactly. So where he was literally like, you just be cool Someone's out here. Watching. Yeah, because yeah. you know no one's watching. When no one's policing the police, they do whatever the hell they want to say because they can write the story. Yeah. But he knew for a fact, fuck a dash cam, he had one, two, three too many eyes, eyes, too many, too many for eyes. whatever was about to happen or whatever. And I'm not going to say he had malicious, malicious intent, but... It went from, you know, you was going 77 and changing lanes with no signals to, you just, just try to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, he literally was like, uh, give me the information so I can go get the paperwork started. I was yeah. like, we're starting paperwork? Because I, I wasn't speeding or nothing. Yeah. He was like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Then he comes back after the phone call and all that, and he was like, you just be, you be blessed. Yeah. I'm like. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I think it's, it's you know, it's one mm. of the challenges about why um, I'm challenged about you know, being married because I saw men that really cared about their culture. They cared about the women and the children of their culture, not to make it a black thing and uh, versus other races. It is. We didn't make it a black thing. They did. Yeah. Well, but <laughs> what you mean? But they snatched us, brought us here, and said, "Y'all are black." <laughs> not even that. You are uh, enforced immigrants. There you go. Uh, so, but uh, uh, it it. It's missed in our in our generation right now. Yeah, like, but it you, you just made reference to being pressed about a husband. 
And those examples supersede yeah. what you see in now. So basically, yeah. you were raised amongst kings, and now like my these niggas just says, ain't shit. You got a shirt on that says king? says, I'm only attracted to kings. I'm only attracted to kings. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but you got to say what the kingdom is. Some of these niggas is the king of one nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> that is his whole well, situation. That can't be a kingdom. Uh. <laughs> Listen. That's no, and I think I think just to encourage, just to encourage um uh our brothers to realize that not you know, love is love. Whoever you love is who you love. But okay. realize to embrace all of us. Like even when you're walking down the street, like I'll have a brother walk down the street and won't even say, Hey, good morning. You know, or or hold the door open. Right. You know, and I'm not even talking about just being cavalier. I'm just saying, like, acknowledge the fact that you matter. Mm -hmm. You matter. We are we are in the same. I'm not even gonna say struggle. We are in the same walk. Same discourse. Yeah, we're in the same walk. Hmm. And in that, just acknowledge each other and be willing to understand what one is really going through because you're in the same skin that they're in. You know what they're going through. Right. Now, somebody who has been a, a, a phenomenal example of black excellence in film, right, and theater, what is the state of our, how the president would come out and say state of our union? What would you say is the state <laughs> of our industry right now? Um, I think, uh, I think it's, it's, it proves itself to open itself to be better because we are we have more things available to us than in the past. Hmm. I think that now what we have to do is we have to capitalize on them. Okay. And we have to have more ownership of what it means to be able to put products out and not just products that just resemble our faces, but products that are smart, products that are foretelling for allowing us to move ahead, forge ahead, to be able to be um, um, the, on the precipice of what it means to move this pendulum forward. Trend setting. And we have a new word of the day. Precipice? <laughs> Precipice is a new word of the day. I'm not going to ask you to spell it. No, please don't. <laughs> That's what Alexis So we, you're saying we need to get, you're saying we need to get, you're saying we, we, we right now it could it would help us as a whole for the culture if we got back on the cutting edge, yeah, and uh, put moving the needle forward. Moving it forward. Is there anything right now, any projects that you are peeping or have heard of or know of that you're like this kind of does do that? Um, I think um, the whole Netflix game is 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 that I think. Um, I think uh, the great thing about when when I use that as an example is that they've taken television into a whole nother spectrum. Mm. And to be able to allow for content to come through anybody's mobile app or anybody's position to be anywhere and mm -hmm, to be mm -hmm. able to watch anything right. like this, a podcast. Like, mm -hmm. This is awesome. Like I think once we decide to really put ourselves in there in a, in a, in a stronger position, that there it is. I mean, I think today's technology is what is our friend. It's our friend. I agree. And I, I've had different shows where I've been talking to comedians of different, um, from different classes or age ranges. Yeah. And there's like a distinct moment in time where like the OGs got passed because they didn't get on the internet. Yeah. Well. And you gotta, you gotta adapt. Like. It and makes no sense. Them. That's I'm like sitting in your house I'm and you're still watching up. a black and white TV. Why? We we own flat screen, color screen. And I'm catching up too because technology is that fast. It's quick. It's it's um and it's easy to be I'm fifty one as of yesterday. Get the fuck out of here, you know, goddamn fifty one years old. You're not fifty one. I can't wait to get the fuck out of here because I'm starving. But um <laughs> it, should, it was your birthday yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. I'm gonna sing you happy birthday. <clears throat> I haven't right sang. now. As we speak. Right now. Okay. Well, let's... Happy birthday to you. Ooh. Happy birthday to you. Yes. You. Happy birthday, dear Kalita. Oh, come on. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Captain. Hey. <laughs> That's oh, what's man. up. But hey, yeah. 51. And I mean, God damn, what you been drinking? Noni juice? Nigga, you look uh, phenomenal. I would love some Noni juice. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna eat. <laughs> we gonna eat. <laughs> uh, no, you know, when you do what you love, listen, that's the fountain of youth. Period. Yeah. That's incredible. 
So we were talking off camera, uh, and I kind of led into, do you see something out there that is kind of doing that? Um, I think, you know, I think... It's a not, lot of people would say... But it's not one project. It is a network. Like, we have to I get that, but what I'm, what I'm leading to is that a lot of people would say blackish is that that thing now. And I know for a fact the Bernie Mac show provided a foundation, a structure, and was on the precipice at the time. So uh, I'm I not trying to hit like a hot keyword or nothing. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were like, ooh, you're nigga. <laughs> <laughs> was, I'm definitely not that guy that hits you with booby traps during no podcast. No, no, but no. the real talk is the Bernie Mac show actually opened the the, the spectrum for um, what we know uh, sitcom TV to be what it is right now: single camera, no laugh tracks, no audience. Uh, no, I'll, I'll hold right there. That's in very, very important fact because there's a format of a sitcom. There's multi camera where that's like one set crowd. They're laughing, so when you watch the show, you hear a laugh track, and like um, the uh, was it Al, Al Bundy, like that was like you just looking at the living room, and there's people laughing. Roseanne, yeah. but well, so I work on a show now in the cut. There's laugh tracks in there, and um, we don't shoot with laugh tracks. They're added post. in. Post. Yeah. They're okay. Added in, um, which, but Bernie Mac show was single camera. Single camera. There was no audience. No audience. And there was no laugh. Uh, uh, the laugh track wasn't there. Was, no, that wasn't that's there. Added in. You, so you, so you, are la- you are allowed to laugh on your own. Right, but then after that, now it affects what Always Sunny in Philadelphia, uh, Modern Family, Modern Family yeah, shows that have gotten continuous Emmys ever since then. Right, yeah. and so I think it's worth saying, you know, like and he fought for that. Like, goddamn, that was one of the major fights Bernie Mac had with Network to yeah. get done, and because he saw creatively that this is how I want to do it, yeah, and we're gonna do it this way, yeah. and there was all kinds of pushback. Yeah. Then they did it with no faith in it. Then it worked, and then it changed the mold, like the NBA adding rules for certain players, like it changed the mold. <laughs> but ain't nobody looking back and being like, this is why we do it like this. Yes. No. And that's how it always is. And a think, nigga invented the light bulb, but y'all think Thomas Edison did it. Yeah, listen, listen. And the great thing is, um, to 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 the adage of it all, is that what Bernie did was not only pick a television family, he actually picked a family. And in picking the family, we are um, forging ahead and creating um, things as a group. Say that closer so they know what's the, what you're doing. <laughs> You are forging ahead. We're forging ahead and we're creating projects as a group Mm -hmm. um, for not only for ourselves, but for other people. Um, We have not uh, decided on the title or the name of our production company, Mm -hmm. but we are forming a production company to do so. That's wonderful. And we is? We is the children of the Bernie Mac show, which would be Camille Wimbush, Jeremy Suarez, and Dee Dee Daryl Davis. Or Daryl Dee Dee Davis. Oh. And myself. Okay. That's baby girl. Yeah, yeah. So Daryl Davis, you take the D from each one. That's how you get the DD. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just connected from right now. <laughs> We're hungry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there now. So I usually rock for, uh, I say, I think this has been this has been cracking. Like I would love I would love to have you back. I'm definitely gonna feed you before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm coming back because you said you was gonna uh, give me some help me out with the, my stand up. Yeah, we gonna get you right well, with my conversation. We will, we will un- 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 unequivocally we will make it so that conversations you would like to have and stories you would like to share are received by the masses much better. Or you know you haven't done it yet, so just we'll I've get you it. right. I've done it. Get the fuck out. Where'd you do stand up at? Places. Where? With people. Where? That's that's, that's with who? Where? What city? Oh, I've done I, it in Los Angeles. You been so how many times oh have you, so, how many times you been up? So I was hosting Weber's. I brought Tiffany Haddish up several times. But, I've hosted um get I, out of here. Yeah, I host places. Totally. But how many times have you where you would say that was a comedy set? You've done that. Several times. The comedy store, I've done David Arnold's sh- classes okay. where done, he makes you do a you, so you've done the art of a stand-up comic yeah that's wonderful yeah so you yeah man you, so, yeah, how, man. so how long you been doing stand-up then I or mean, are you still trying to say you haven't started yet I, well what i haven't said is i i don't have like you're getting ready to open up a comedy club which mm-hmm, is a, mm-hmm. an awesome thing to do Thanks. i think that's a mark mm-hmm. i think when you do something like that you you are bona fide mm, okay right 
Would you For not sure. say that? Yeah, yeah that's like a verification. You've done a festival, so I, I've not done festival. So to me, in my mind, I haven't hit those marks. Like as an actor, if you've not, I don't know, if you haven't done theater, mm -hmm. if you haven't booked a pilot, right. if you haven't done a series, mm -hmm. if you haven't necessarily uh, done a film, to me, you really can't say that you're an actor. Those four things are key for you to say. They're key. Okay. They're key. I mean, theater. Theater. I'm an actor. I haven't done. But that's theater. getting paid as an actor. Like you're a professional. Sure. Okay. But now for us to say and quantify you, define, you define and, it and quantify mm -hmm. you. I mean, theater, a pilot, TV, a film, mm -hmm. for sure. Outstanding. Whether you're award or recognized or not. I mean, you're recognized in that medium, but that's to that group of people. I think that's a good. I think that's decent. Some some people might be like that's a little hard on them, especially now with the social media stuff. Some of these people are literally actors because they film themselves at home, and they're acting at the house. Uh, I don't. I don't really think that we should uh, blur those lines. I think those they should stay as defined as they are because it takes work and it takes time and it takes commitment and it should not be blurred just because you could turn on a motherfucking camera from your phone mm -hmm. and you walk it down the street and you think you're an actor yeah Good that's luck. real i feel the same way Good about luck comedy because there's, a, lo there's a lot that. of people who are who yeah. say funny stuff yeah but that don't mean you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe. exactly i could say funny stuff but i would not quantify myself as a comedian just because i said some funny shit like that's disrespectful i wouldn't do that so you keep that in mind when you're throwing around the word actor and actress all willy-nilly. And comedy and comedian and comic all willy-nilly. Or throwing the word willy-nilly around. like That's the new word of the day. It was precipice and we're going to switch over to willy-nilly. <laughs> because just as much as we are intelligent, we niggas too. And willy-nilly don't make no damn sense. Listen. <laughs> but listen, so um, I want you to tell them when they can find you, what, what projects to look forward to seeing you on next. Um, I'm not going to be hard to find. Just look. Just type in Kalita Smith. She pops up. Bing, bang. Thank you.